All right, it's time once again for more comment responses. Will you ever buy the Maru 4x4 or 5x5? Because I heard they would be better than the V cubes. Well, I haven't looked into the Maru cubes in quite a while, and the last time I heard they were knockoffs, but then I heard Red KB say that they're not knockoffs, so I'm, I would really have to look into it. But if I want to get another 4x4, I would probably go for the X cube 4 rather than the Maru 4x4. And I'm perfectly happy with my V cube 5 right now. Even if there is a puzzle that is slightly better, I will just stick with my cube because I'd rather get an entirely different puzzle rather than one that's just a little bit different than one that I already have. But if someone were to submit the Maru 4x4 to my moderator module on my channel, then I would consider getting it. Does anyone in your family at least know how to solve any type of cube? Now if you remember, I said in last week's video that I gave my brother the, my Rubik's 2x2 because I taught him how to solve it. I think I taught him to solve the 3x3, but he's probably forgot it since then. My sister that you, that you may have seen on my other channel, she does know how to do patterns, but that's about it. Why didn't you buy a stack mat if you're a cuber? Well, as I said in my last video, I don't really solve my cubes to get the fastest time anymore. And back when I did speed solve a long time ago, I was perfectly happy with my spacebar. You know, it just seems like the spacebar may add half a second to a second to your time, and that's pretty negligible to me. How do you memorize all of the OLLs and PLLs without forgetting them the next day? Well, it's simple. You probably spend 20 minutes to a half hour learning one algorithm, and then a few hours later, you do it again, and then a few hours later, you do it again, and then the next morning, morning, you get up and do it again. If you do it constantly like that, then you probably won't forget it. But if you spent 10 minutes learning an algorithm and waited to the next day to apply it again, then yeah, you probably will forget it. What is the worst puzzle that you have ever bought? I would say the cube for you Gigaminx, because after you open it for the first time, it just turns awful. After my modification and putting some dirt in here, it improves it somewhat. I mean, it, it's decent now, but out of the box, it is awful. Why don't you keep up with all the newest cubes and lubrications? Well, back in college, I didn't really have a whole lot of time for that, but now that I'm in the summer, I'm really trying to get back into it. So I'm checking all the forms a little more than I used to, and yeah, I'm putting a little more effort to keep up. Is there any cube modifications you think you'd be able to make yourself, like what Tony Fisher does? Actually, I have attempted two modifications. Once I was trying to make a fully functional 2x2x4 two by two by out of Rubik's 2x2s, two by twos, but I gave up on that. And then I saw Red KB's video, and I tried to make a fully functional 3x3x5 three by three by proportional to, but I did some cutting with a jigsaw, and that's really all the farther I got. How much do you think it costs for all of your cubes combined? Well, brand new, I probably have spent uh, probably between $500 and $750 over the past three and a half years. All used, my collection is probably worth at least a couple hundred dollars. Can you make a third video contest and the winner gets a cube? Well, I've been thinking about it over the past week, and maybe I'll do something at the end of the summer to kind of conclude things when I go, just before I get back into school. Do you still stay in contact with Chris Bird? Are you friends with Thrust? Not really anymore. I mean, we used to back when we were organizing the five awesome cubers, but we haven't really done anything since then. How many OLLs and PLLs have you memorized? I currently have all of the PLLs memorized, but I'm still on two look OLL. So I still use the beginner's method to get the cross, and then I use the OLL algorithms to orient the remaining corners. Though we do have a road trip coming up, and I'm thinking of taking the time to memorize them on that, if I don't get car sick, that is. Do your friends ever call you a nerd after seeing you make cubing videos on YouTube? Well, not my closest friends. I mean, they think it's actually pretty cool. But when I have just met someone, like at Golden Corral, maybe it's a new worker, sometimes people think I'm a nerd for knowing how to solve them. And a lot of times they'll say, you have way too much time. But I have the excuse to say that I used to have a whole lot of time. Remember I said in my last video that I really haven't improved much in cubing in the past two years. How can you tell if a cube is a knockoff? Pretty much the best way is just to do your research. And that would be beneficial anyway, because then you know if you're getting a good quality cube or not. Do you consider the Ishin 4x4 or 5x5 or the V-Cube 5 knockoffs of the Rubik's 4x4 and 5x5? No, because after, I think, 25 years, patents expire, giving the opportunity for competitors to bring down the prices. If there would be a competition in your area, would you go to it? 
If so, which events would you compete in? If it was a maximum of four hours away, then I'd probably consider going to it. And the ones I'd compete in would probably be the 2x2 two two through 7x7. Seven seven. But I'm not really fast enough at any of my other puzzles to really compete. Have you ever considered learning how to blindfold solve the cube? Yes, but I'm a little intimidated about how much time it would take. Do you have any friends that cube? Well, I had a few friends a while ago that could solve the Rubik's Cube, but that's really all the farther I got. If we ever raced, I easily beat them. What is better, QJ, MF8, or Mefferts? Well, to me, QJ has seemed on the lower side of things, but those puzzles are also cheaper. So if you're looking to save money on a cube and you don't really care about the quality too much, you just want a decent puzzle, then I would think QJ would be a good brand. But as for MF8 and Mefferts, it's a little harder to say. They may even be equal in their qualityness. Will you ever be purchasing the Rubik's Magic? Well, I've been a fan of twisty puzzles, you know, like all of these kind, uh, but I mean, the Rubik's Magic, you can flip around and such, but I've really, my attention has been more drawn to these puzzles. But if it were submitted to the moderator module, then I would consider getting it. So I got mad at my Rubik's brand 5x5 and thus threw it at my wall and it shattered. That's actually a pretty decent thing you can do to that cube. I'm thinking of replacing it, but I also want to get a 6x6. I can't afford both, so which should I get? Well, I think the answer to that depends on how much quality you want in the cube, how much you're willing to modify a cube to get that quality, and how much you'd rather get a new puzzle over one that you already had. Since you're still using the Rubik's 5x5, you may not mind the poor quality of the V-Cube 6. So if that's the case, then I'd recommend you go ahead and buy it. Or if you want to get a high quality cube, but you don't mind modifying it, then yeah, go for the V-Cube 6. But if you'd rather not modify it, then I would recommend going for the V-Cube 5. But personally, if quality isn't an important factor, I would go for a new puzzle rather than a variation of one I already have. What is the difference between intuitive F2L and algorithm F2L? Which method do you use? I learned F2L the intuitive way, so basically the tutorial I watched, I don't remember what it was, says to get this piece, you bring this piece up, you connect it with this, and then you bring it down. So, and that seemed pretty simple to me. It took me several hours over a few days to get used to it, but that's how I learned it. With algorithm F2L, that would just involve a whole lot of memorizing, and you don't really know what's going on. I think that should be safe for OLL and PLL. I mean, if you can solve most of your cube intuitively, that's definitely the way to go. Will you still make challenges? As of now, no. I mean, that just took up way too much of my time. You know, I put them all on that other channel, so you guys are still free to watch them. But if people were to vote on my channel, then and yeah, I'd consider doing it again. Just very narrowed down is all. All right, so that about does it for cubing-related comments. Let's move on to non-cubing-related ones. I just got YouTube partnership. Would you be interested in a collaboration? Yeah, I actually would be. However, it would be kind of helpful if we were in the same location, because I think a collaboration from two different places would really complicate things. You know, you'd have to get on the webcam regularly, write out a script word for word so that you can make sure everything flows smoothly. You have to make sure the surroundings are similar. Similar, but if we were able to get together one-on-one -on -one, that we could improvise when things go wrong We can brainstorm together more easily So I am open to collaborations, but I would prefer to be in person to work on it And I would also prefer that anyone else who's interested would have a decent sized subscriber base before contacting me That way I know that you have enough experience to work with me. Can you play an instrument? Actually, no I learned take me home country road on the piano once because I just followed the keystrokes on my sister's keyboard Board, but that's about it. How many people recognize you as me, myself, and Pi each day? Well, that's really a question you should ask Mystery Guitar Man. A more appropriate question is how many times have you been recognized? And the answer to that is three times. But I go more into that into my video entitled Work on my other channel, Me, Myself, and Movies. I'm going to randomly come up to you saying, I'm a huge fan. What would you do if another vlogger came up with a camera saying, this guy is a master at cubing? Then I would pull out my camera and document the moment. I do bring a camera everywhere I go. I didn't do it at Golden Corral where I was recognized three times because really there's people all around and people waiting to be rung up and such. So that would just be a little awkward. If it was any other public place though, then yes, I would most certainly do that. What do you plan to do in the future as a full-time job if you stopped YouTubing and were away from the media scene? Well, I've always been good at math and I've always liked designing things, so I'd probably go into some form of engineering, maybe even mathematics. Have you ever had 
had a girlfriend? Honestly, no, I have never been in a relationship. And I am actually 20 years old, and I'm serious about this. I have never been interested in getting in a relationship. Now, I can go on and on over the reason why, but I've decided to upload that as a separate video on my other channel. So you can check that out if you're interested. All right, those are all of my comment responses for now. If your guys' comment responses didn't get in the video, well, be sure to try again on this video. And believe me, your chances are a lot better than they are on Ray William Johnson's videos. Oh, and one last thing, I would like to announce the schedules that I'm going to be setting up for this channel. You know, just this past week I procrastinated and I never got any reviews or tutorials up that I wanted to make, but I did get these types of videos up and these take a lot longer to make. And the thing is, is that I kind of set up mental schedule for every Tuesday. So I'm thinking that if I set schedules for everything, that'll give me more motivation to actually make those videos. So for these comment response videos, I'm going to be uploading them every Tuesday. Then on Thursday, I will be uploading a review or tutorial. And finally, on Saturday, I will be uploading some type of entertaining cubing video. Oh, and also I may upload extra videos throughout the week, but those schedules that I just announced, those will be the bare minimum that I will be uploading. Now, chances are is that I may miss a video, maybe by one or two days sometime this summer, so please be a little lax when it comes to that. However, if I miss it by three days, then I will try to make it up in some way. So I'm really excited about getting these schedules going. I hope I'm going to be able to keep up with them, and if you want to be notified of when they're uploaded, be sure to subscribe above. All right, so that about does it for this video. If you guys like them, you can check out last week's video, or you can even check out next week's video when it's uploaded. Thanks for watching, guys!